I've heard from the comment section that you guys want short intros. So what's up? My name's Tucker. We're going to talk about the finals. Leave a like, rating, socials. Let's go. Okay. The 2021 NBA finals have been out of control. Apologies if I sound a little bit sick here. I've got a small cold. It's it's a series that, quite frankly, I think the majority of people were not as excited for as they typically would be for a finals. And I think that's completely natural. It's the Suns. It's the Bucks. It's exciting because it's different teams. It's exciting because of the Chris Paul storyline, him finally getting to the finals and Giannis having a chance to win a title. And there's a lot of first time championship guys in this series, but it wasn't the Lakers. It wasn't the Warriors. It wasn't LeBron. It wasn't Steph. It wasn't Kevin Durant. I think there was a lot of expectations that we were going to have Nets Lakers, Nets Clippers, uh, even it seemed like Philly with Embiid playing incredibly well. I think there were a lot of matchups people were excited for. Then once we got Suns Bucks, a lot of people were looking around like, is this really the one we should be amped for? And my biggest thing going into the series was not a lack of excitement around the teams, but it was more so the Giannis injury thing. Like, I had no idea if Giannis was going to play in the series until games three, four, five, something like that. It didn't seem like he was going to be able to play in the early part of the series. And then he has played, and he has played out of his mind, by the way. So that has changed a lot of things. That was really the only thing that was kind of uh, tempering my excitement. But in this video, we're going to be kind of talking about Game 5 last night, the series up to this point, and just why this is, in my opinion, the best finals since 2016 up to this point. So Game 5 last night. And going to the game, everybody knows it's a huge game. Game 5 is typically... In a good final series, Game 5 looks like what it did last night, where it, you know each team won their two home games, and then Game 5 is the pivotal one. And Phoenix came out and played incredibly well. They hit a ton of shots. Milwaukee, despite a good start from guys like Drew Holiday, they just looked a little bit out of sorts. They weren't hitting their shots. And Phoenix was hitting on all cylinders. They were making all their threes. I think they were up 15 or 16 or something at the end of the first quarter. Then the second started, and it basically completely flipped. Uh, Phoenix started settling for threes rather than getting good ones, and Milwaukee started hitting their shots. And a lot of this series, despite adjustments, despite Giannis playing at the five-some minutes, trying to figure out how to get some Lopez minutes, more Bobby Portis, uh, some of the struggles between Booker and Paul where they can never seem to get on the same page and play well in the same game, all those different factors, a lot of the series, quite frankly, has come down to shot making. And last night, the shot making was out of control for the majority of the game, as indicated by the final score being as high as it was. And the biggest takeaway for me was for the first three quarters, Chris Paul got absolutely demolished by Drew Holiday. Chris Paul has been very up and down in this series, played incredible in game one. And for the last couple of games, they're just, I, I don't know if it, there's a wrist injury. I don't know what's going on with him, but clearly he's not comfortable. Holiday's doing a really good job of defending him. And for the first three quarters, not only was Holiday guarding Paul well, and there were he didn't have any turnovers, but there were a couple of turnovers that were basically his. But I mean, every single time down the floor, Drew Holiday was getting an open shot with Chris Paul guarding him. And once they finally got to the fourth quarter, they finally decided to make a switch. They put Bridges on Holiday. They put Booker on Middleton uh, and put Jay Crowder on somebody else. I'm not really sure who. Uh, and that adjustment certainly helped them, but they probably should have gone to that sooner because Chris Paul just had no chance. I mean, they had been guarding Holiday with Paul because his jump shot wasn't falling. But last night he was making threes. He's making mid-range jumpers, getting to the rim. And that matchup was as lopsided as it could possibly be in a final series through the first three quarters. Now, Paul turned around, hit some big shots in the fourth, made some plays, but that is a matchup that if Milwaukee is losing, excuse me, if Milwaukee is winning to that extent through three quarters, Phoenix doesn't have a chance to win this series. Chris Paul's got to play better. They've got to be able to defend Drew Holiday better. And obviously in some games, they have defended Drew Holiday well. He's four for 20 in game four, wasn't hitting shots. Um, but Milwaukee just had one of those games last night where all three guys at certain points in the game were, were hitting shots, whether it was Middleton, whether it was Holiday, Giannis started to get it going later in the game as well. And when all three of those guys are playing well and hitting their shots offensively, they're incredibly difficult to guard. Phoenix, meanwhile, you know, is, is really reliant on a lot of Devin Booker shot creation and guys off the ball making shots. And if they're not, things get difficult. But this series as a whole, I think, is, is really important to kind of informing where we're at right now in the NBA because we've had years and years and years of LeBron or Steph or Kevin Durant in the finals, one of them for years and years and years and years. And we're kind of transitioning now into this into this new era, certainly with the Browns age where he might I mean, he might make a finals again, but who knows, uh, you know, Steph's age getting up there as well. We're kind of transitioning into this new era where guys like Giannis and guys like Joel Embiid and and Devin Booker, these guys are going to be in the finals. And I'm not sure we've done a good enough job as as a league of, of promoting teams outside of just the big markets and teams outside of ones that have LeBron and have Steph because people should be more excited about this like strictly from a basketball standpoint from a quality of play standpoint this has been 
in my opinion, the best finals since 2016. And 2016 was arguably one of the greatest finals of all time. That's the Kyrie shot, the LeBron block, all that stuff. But this series through five games has had two really good games in the in the first two games. Game three, not so much. Game four was awesome. Game five was awesome. There have been incredible moments individually. The Giannis block, the Giannis alley-oop off the Drew Holiday steal. Uh, multiple 40-point games from a ton of different guys. I think Giannis has two 40-point games. Middleton has a 40-point game. Devin Booker has back-to-back 40-point games. There have been incredible storylines from the, the, the Holiday-Paul matchup and the fact that Paul almost got traded to Milwaukee and, and, and uh, you know, d- instead they chose Holiday and now they're matching up in the finals and there's so many different headlines and storylines and I just feel like I feel like people should care more and people like myself that that love the NBA to its absolute core I'm always going to be excited about the finals I'm always gonna be excited no matter what the matchup was if it was if it was you know Hawks Mavs like I would have been excited about the finals right but I feel like as a whole the the more casual fan base is not being drawn in enough to a product that is incredible to this point from a basketball standpoint but because certain guys and certain teams aren't involved they've been trained to think that it's not that exciting of a series and that it's not that cool and that there aren't really many things to pay attention to when in reality as i said this is one of the best finals we've had in a decade in the and in my opinion the best finals since 2016 the other one in contention there would be 2019 raptors warriors but this the amount of injuries in that series for me kind of deflated that one a bit and then last year of course being in the bubble was was obviously very very strange so moving forward in the series now I mean, Milwaukee's one went away from an NBA title. I kind of felt like this series was going to go six or seven. I thought Phoenix was going to win five. Milwaukee was going to win six. And then whatever happens in seven happens. Now Phoenix is going to go on the road and, and win a game in Milwaukee with a title on the line. I mean, Milwaukee has a chance to clinch a title at home. And that is an incredible amount of pressure on them and as well as on Phoenix. Phoenix has been a really good road team all season long and in the postseason. And part of me thinks that when we're talking about how much it comes down to shot making, right? Part of me thinks that the you know the opportunity to win a championship at home could kind of juice these guys up a little bit and and cause them to miss a lot of shots. There's just a lot of pressure on you if you're Milwaukee um, to to shoot well in that game. And again, that's what a lot of these games have come down to. And that's just kind of how the, how the league is now. I mean, you can talk about adjustments, you can talk about how you're defending ball screens and and trying to to make shots as difficult as possible. But with as well as guys can shoot now, uh, you know, on and off the ball. A lot of it just comes down to look at the rebounding stuff, look at the turnover stuff to see who gets more shot opportunities, and then look at the three-pointers. And when you look at the box score, I'm sure 90% of the time in the NBA, you can tell who won the game by looking at those three things just because of the quantity of shots. You can get extra shots, whether it be offensive rebounds uh, or or not turning the ball over, and then it's it's three-point shooting. So this, this series, like I said, is kind of an indicator of where we're at, where I think the quality of play and the shot making has been incredible. There have been a ton of great storylines from a from a narrative standpoint. It's out of control. But because of the teams and some of the players involved, there isn't as much excitement around it, which is disappointing. But also the style of play, I think, is very, very 2021 NBA. So I'm excited to see what happens with the rest of the series. I'm hoping it goes seven. My prediction before the series was Suns and six. I was feeling pretty good about that after the first two games. Obviously, that has not um, come about. I'm interested to see what you guys have to say down in the comment section below in terms of what you think is going to happen the rest of the way in the series. Regardless, I, either Giannis or Chris Paul or Devin Booker, like those guys are going to get their first title and that's going to be super, super cool. And then we're going to kind of see how that potentially propels Giannis. I mean, if Giannis wins a title, he's 26 and he's got two MVPs, a defensive player of the year, a title, uh, finals MVP, probably. I mean, that that's, that's going to catapult him up in a, in a hugely significant way. And to go from where... I think the perception of Giannis was during that Brooklyn series where people didn't view him as like a super skilled player and a guy that was just big and athletic to potentially now winning a title at 26, uh, I believe his eighth year in the league, winning a finals MVP. That would be be hugely narrative changing for him. And ultimately, I think this series has also pointed out something that I'm probably going to make a video on whether they win or lose this series. And that is that Giannis is very clearly a center. Like the Bucs, have been borderline unstoppable when it's been Giannis and four perimeter guys. And when they've taken Lopez off the floor and Giannis has been a screener and an initiator and dribble handoffs, the the Middleton Giannis pick and roll stuff has been borderline unstoppable because of how good Middleton is in the mid range, because of his size, because of his improvement as a passer, because of how devastating Giannis is as a roller when it comes to his vertical spacing and the skill level he has as a passer on short rolls and things like that. And the whole like Giannis is, is the modern day Shaq thing, whether it be because of the free throws or because of how effective he is as a big I think that stuff has has arguably never been more apparent, and 
again, that's something I'm going to probably make a video about at some point, but it, it's very, very clear to me that Giannis's best position is at the five. And I'm sure if you look at the plus minus numbers um, in this series, when you look at the lineups so that they have Giannis at the five as opposed to not, it's a, probably a crazy, crazy difference. So again, something to kind of keep an eye on moving forward the rest of the way in the series. But that is going to be the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like or anybody, anyway, consider subscribing to the channel for more NBA content every single day and check out more videos from me, the boxes on screen as well. Hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. Once again, my name is Tucker and I will see you all next time.